hello and welcome to banks and markets this is benam and in this video i'm going to talk to you about shortino ratio which is a technique a measurement tool of portfolio performance so in my last videos you may remember i was talking about four main composite portfolio performance techniques and one of them was SAR portfolio performance technique and we know there are limitations of SAR ratios and uh, this method Shortino in fact complements the SAR ratio particularly to help find out effective SAR ratio during market decline so when we are interested to find out how the portfolio manager has performed during um, negative um, market return periods during uh, such bearish market period then this is an effective tool uh, but if you apply the SARP ratio, you see SARP ratio focuses on the total risk. And when you focus on the total risk, you are penalizing the portfolio managers um, when the returns are too high or when the returns are too low because the SARP ratio takes the total risk. So this particular method is very simple and easy to implement uh, and the formula is this of course was developed by Shortino and Price in 1994. So Shortino ratio for the portfolio um, can be calculated by finding the excess return, excess from some threshold theta and that is divided by the downside risk which is also known as semi deviation now this is calculated the dr is calculated as follows now you can see this is similar to standard deviation formula such as x minus x bar square divided by n square root so again um it is simple to understand that the downside risk is simply computing the volatility or the standard deviation but for the period when the return RIT for a return for the different time periods are smaller than certain um, certain amount uh, generally uh, the average return amount okay so now i will explain and demonstrate uh, this shortino measure using a numerical example and in this numerical example you can see i've already copied the formula therefore for this number here first thing i need to do is to find out the downside risk or semi deviation at some time it is called so first thing I'll find is the average which is simply the average for all these 10 different period and then I need the standard deviation so STDEV is what I need to do and then I need to define the range and I get the standard deviation as well as the average return for the portfolio which is portfolio A as well as another portfolio which is portfolio B so um, it's just made it this way in this example that the average for both the portfolio are equal to uh, 4 but that's fine now this 4 is basically representing uh, this and this number here this is what we will keep four will be here so what do we need now is um is this um the number each of these return minus the four so therefore what we can do the first thing is equal the portfolio a return in period one take away this number four so we get minus 9 now in order for me to allow copy it what I'm going to do I'm going to lock um, lock the 
average uh, return for the portfolio so i am going to lock the row number c13 of course both um, for portfolio a and b it is four doesn't matter but i have done it now i drag it on this side and i'm going to again pull it down all the way so i'm going to get this so i have rit minus ri computed for both my portfolio but it is not meaningful here it would be meaningful when i take this square of them similar to standard deviation computation so now i have this all so i've got this in a square form so i need to get the total because i also have a summation sign here so i'm going to add them all up but remember when i now add them up i need to be careful because i do not want the total risk i do not want all these returns what i want is the returns that are below that number which was four that number which is like a hurdle rate so in this case the hurdle rate we assumed will be the average rate of return so i want to see in which periods i have the return which are equal to or less or less than four okay less than four let's take it so i can see that up until period five in both the portfolios the returns are less than four so this basically means i need to add up until this point this is what i need to do because that is the point i have in which the returns are less than four okay no no number five yeah number five taken as well yes so one two three four five one two three four five now i therefore need to sum them up which is just add these so i get 168 here and this 116 here now i need to divide them by how many we had five of them so that five goes here and this five is against the same so i get these numbers and now they will i need to do the last thing which is the square root of them which is this and therefore i get 5.79 and 4.81 so i have found my dri or my semi deviation as these or downside risk um, have been computed here next what i need is the shortino ratio now in the case of shortino ratio what i need is here in the formula i can see i need the average return which i've already calculated which is four minus that minus that threshold now let's assume that the threshold that theta is that that number is two okay uh, t, t is two okay so not that and therefore what i get now is equal this which is four take away two and, and then i need to divide it by downside risk which is 5.79 this number here so this is what i am going to get when i apply this i am going to get this number this is my shortino ratio for portfolio a what is it for portfolio b for portfolio b it is 0 0.42 now again important is higher the better the sortino ratio for portfolio b is higher as compared to portfolio a so therefore we take portfolio b portfolio b has superior performance but if this was to be calculated using the sharp ratio then what would it be it would be average minus the the risk-free type of rate okay so 
if we do the same, um, assuming these numbers here are like 4 minus, let's say 2, divided by the standard deviation, we were going to get this number here, 0 0.3569, and over here we would get 0 0.33. So according to the sharp, we would prefer portfolio A here, not portfolio B. According to sharp, it's portfolio A. But according to Shortino ratio, way in which we are looking for the performance when the returns are below returns are below certain threshold and in this case we took the average which is 4 we are able to say that the portfolio manager B has performed better so in a way what you can say is portfolio B or the manager looking after portfolio B is clever to to rebalance um, or to manage the portfolio during bearish market period as compared to the manager of portfolio A. Very simple but useful and also meaningful. Thank you very much for listening.